Items you'll need to make soap dishes include this list and also paper cups and a stirring stick. My children and I have been making these soap dishes for approximately three years, so we will be listing tips throughout the video um, just for best practices and how to get the best results and stuff. So just try to listen through if you're interested in all the little details. The resin that we're using today is well suited for uh, water, so when you're putting wet soap on it, you need a resin that can stand up to um, water and just being in a moist environment. So make sure your resin is suitable for that. I'm using the Pro Marine Tabletop Epoxy, and there are a couple other good choices out there too. Now when you order your resin or epoxy, it's going to come in two containers. One is the hardener and one is the epoxy. So what you need to do is measure out each one in equal amounts by volume, um, not by weight. Uh, this is very important. Um, so go by wa uh, volume and I just eyeball it in these cups and there's like little line markers so I know exactly um, my, my measurements are fairly precise. And so I just poured the epoxy, that's the thicker one, in the blue, now I'm going to pour my hardener, and again, it has to be at equal amounts. The next step <clears throat> after measuring them out precisely is to mix them together. Um, I like to work with silicone too, so my stir is made with silicone, and I have a silicone mat there. Um, this just really helps with the cleanup. It's really easy to get resin off of the silicone. So that's what I like to use. And I'm just going to mix this gently for three to four minutes or as directed on the package of your resin. Now you're gonna notice that as I mix it, there's going to be some air bubbles that form. So that's why I try to mix gently for the most part. Um, but I'll show you a trick in a minute when we get to it, how to get some of those bubbles out once we're making the soap dish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stir for four minutes and I'll speed this up for you. I've been making soap dishes for quite a while, so I kind of know about how much to pour in each mold, and I'll put a link down below for where I got these molds. Um, you don't need to fill them up too full because we will be putting rocks in it, and I find it's easier and less messy to add too little resin at first and then add a little bit more if you need to than it is to put too much in and your resin overflows and it can be quite um, a hassle to pick up, especially if you don't catch it right away and it only you catch it after it hardens. So now you can see here that um, there are quite a few bubbles in my molds. And so I have this flamethrower thingy. It's, well, not a flamethrower, <laughs> right? It's like a flame thingy. And uh, uh, people will use it a lot with like acrylic pouring and painting techniques, but I just quickly like turn it on and throw a little heat over the bubbles and the bubbles all come to the top and, and pop. Now if you don't have a flame torch, you can use this little uh, thing, cigarette oh, burner. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know my words. I can put links to all this down below. Most people might have this type of thing. Again, I'm not touching the resin either. I'm just going slightly on the top of it. So here we have our pebbles that were we have bought. We got ours from dollar stores. Um, you can get them on Amazon, online, and then we're just going to be putting these pebbles in the resin soap dishes. Uh, we try to put the larger ones towards the edges and maybe the more shallow ones towards the inside so that when you put your soap onto 
this once it's dried like it's not gonna be tilted outwards and slip off of the soap dish so we try to have it kind of centralized and even It's also kind of funny if you'll notice, I have one child that likes to put the pebbles in one by one and arrange them and then I have another who will just take a handful and then plop them in her dish and then rearrange them. So there's really uh, no wrong way to do this. It, I mean, depends on your personality or what kind of time you have, I guess. Once we have all the pebbles in their soap dishes, I like to go over it one more time with the flamethrower just to release more bubbles that may have settled out. And then also, I, I forgot to mention that you'll usually have about 45 minutes before the resin starts to get pretty uh, thick and harder. So you have, you know, 40 minutes to play with the resin and the pebbles and the soap dishes and just have fun with it. And again, this is something that children can do. Um, I would recommend gloves and tying their hair back and even aprons and definitely working on silicone is will make it much easier. It's been 18 hours and it's time to unmold our soap dishes. So they turned out nice and it's really easy to unmold. You just peel the mold off and there we go. Now occasionally if you had like put too much resin in, there's going to be a little bit of extra resin on the sides. Sometimes you can just kind of tear it off, but sometimes you're going to need a wet piece of sandpaper. Make sure it's wet because you don't want to, that'll help reduce the resin dust in the air and you just grind it or sand it just a little bit on the edges just to smooth it, smooth it off. And again, always make sure it's wet and also wear a mask like some sort of N95 mask or protection. I have my children wear a little protection uh, when they make that too, because there are fumes to resin. So here, you can see this little like extra resin right here. This one's not strong, it's just gonna come right off. So that's fine. A little piece right here too. But sometimes if like you had a massive overflow and there's a really big piece of resin, you really, you can usually sometimes even get a good pair of scissors and cut it off and then sand it. And here's the last one. Now I'm gonna let these cure for a little bit, a week or two, because resin does need to cure as well. And then when they're ready, I have these little bump-ons, they're little rubber feet. And I'm just gonna put them on the bottom. Um, strategically, like kind of symmetrically, I usually put like five, like two, three, four, five. Um, and that just helps keep the soap dish up out of the water when it's at a sink. I learned to put those on at first when I started making these a few years ago. I didn't put those on and it really had a, it really destroyed the resin over, you know, after a couple months. And also the resin I used a few years ago, I wasn't educated on what types of resin would be best, but this one might hold up better. But I, I like to put some rubber backing on there just to help the soap dish lasts a little bit longer. When putting on the rubber bump-ons, they're really, you just take it off, they just peel right off and you just, they stick automatically right to the soap dish. And the kids have been able to sell quite a few dishes on our Etsy page too, and then we mapped it out. We put stickers near where all the soap dishes we have sold have gone. So it's been quite a learning journey in geography and math, and it's been lots of fun. If you enjoyed the video, please comment below and if you have any questions or comments, please let us know. We'll be happy to answer back. Thanks for watching.